next. Uh, you you can that we talked about uh, um, possibility of death if it's disseminated and you get a meningitis from it. And you can also if it's in the cranial nerves, people can get blind, go blind from it. It can destroy. If it's in the in the fifth cranial nerve in the ocular division, people have gone blind. People have had uh, motor paresis in somatic and visceral. It uh, damages your uh, motor horn, and it can damage your sympathetic and parasympathetic outflow. If it occurs in the lumbar uh, region, you can get. Uh, lumbar sacral region, you can get uh, bladder and anal sphincter dysfunction. And um, I, I have seen patients who have become incontinent and remain that way after an acute zoster episode. So these things can happen. We mentioned about encephalitis from uh, spread and, um, and the quality of life. If you see these patients with posterpedic neuralgia, they're not they're very often miserable. If it's really severe, they're unable to function. They can't concentrate. They have low energy. And the disease of posterpedic neuralgia has been looked at in terms of its comparability to other chronic conditions. And it's been found to be comparable to chronic diseases of congestive heart failure, diabetes, MI, and clinical depression. So it's a significant uh, pain problem comparable to other medical problems that can affect somebody. Next, please. Okay. Um, fatality rate in healthy persons. We mentioned about possibility of death. And uh, these are the rates per 100,000. And as you get older than 80, the rate goes up. But you have kind of a baseline incidence of death here, five, uh, approximately five or a little bit less than five out of 100,000 can die uh, from that. Um, other complications from acute zoster, bacterial infections that can lead to uh, um, uh, cellulitis, uh, CNS changes, um, pneumonia, uh, you can get a viral pneumonia from it. And, you, and patients with acute zoster are hospitalized at a rate of uh, three cases of acute zoster per thousand cases that occur. And, he, oh, here's a death, one in 60,000 death rate. So, okay. Next, please. This shows you the economic costs in the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom, where... They have socialized medicine and everything is accounted for in, uh, in terms of diagnoses and costs. This was back in uh, 2004. And so the numbers have changed with inflation, but it gives you a perspective on it. And again, as the population ages, the amount spent on this is going to increase in proportion to the uh, amount uh, the uh, population that has aged. So this is uh, British pounds and the equivalent cost in US dollars uh, in 2004 was about 84 million dollars. This was 48 million pounds in the UK. This was a conversion rate in 2004 and so in the US in 2004 we spent about 84 million dollars on the treatment of posterpedic neuralgia. It gives you a little perspective on uh, the, the uh, significance of the disease in terms of monetary costs. Next, please. So, can we do anything to prevent zoster and prevent posterpedic neuralgia in, uh, specifically? Does the treatment of acute uh, herpes zoster um, shorten uh, the uh, prevent or shorten the course of uh, posterpedic neuralgia. So we're going to look at some uh, studies that have been done that are evidence-based that uh, suggest that we can do something to reduce the incidence and attenuate the severity of it. Next, please. Um, so what we want is a treatment. This, I showed you this graph before. 
what we want is a treatment that when we have an event and we recognize what it is, we can do an intervention. And after our intervention, the ideal response is that the patient gets better immediately and goes back to baseline. The optimal response is that we decrease the severity of the symptom distress and the problem and we shorten the course of it. That's more realistic. This is ideal and this is optimal or more realistic. Decreasing the uh, intensity of the distress and shortening the course. So that's what we would like to try to do. If we had an ideal uh, treatment, of course we should use it. Go forward, please. Um, so the best thing that can be done currently in preventing postherpetic neuralgia is vaccination. They have an attenuated uh, uh, zoster virus for immunization of individuals uh, 60 years of age and older. And what they found is that it reduced the incidence of herpes zoster, acute zoster, by about half. The acute zoster severity was reduced in terms of intensity of pain by almost two-thirds. The incidence of postherpetic neuralgia in those who got vaccinated compared to a placebo was about it was reduced about two thirds. So vaccination can uh, reduce the incidence of acute zoster and reduce the severity if it does occur, and reduce the likelihood of postherpetic neuralgia. Okay, next please. If someone isn't vaccinated, um, or if they're younger than 60, because it's a uh, vaccine is not approved for uh, individuals less than 60, only those over 60. So let's say someone isn't vaccinated, they come in and they have acute zoster. Prevention begins as soon as a diagnosis is made of acute herpes zoster. Antiviral therapy, acyclovir, famcyclovir, have been shown to decrease the duration of acute zoster and reduce the severity of postherpetic neuralgia and the duration and the time course of postherpetic neuralgia after lesions heal. Tricyclic antidepressants have been studied. If you, if someone comes in with acute zoster, and they were, uh, uh, this was a study that was done. They were given uh, amitriptyline, Elevil, amitriptyline, uh, 25 milligrams at night for about three months, and, or they, there was a group who got placebo. Those who got the amitriptyline after the study had much lower incidence of postherpetic neuralgia. So prescribing uh, a, 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 a tricyclic agent at night seems to protect against the development of postherpetic neuralgia. Next, please. Um, these are the antivirals. Um, you, uh, you, you get your results if you start the antiviral within uh, 72 hours of development of the rash. If the patient comes in uh, a week later after the rash has started, you can give the antivirals, but it's not going to be that helpful in, in reducing the incidence of postherpetic neuralgia. So it has to be started early, as soon as you recognize what you're dealing with. Okay. Uh, next, please. Uh, this gives you some of the dosing. We can go on from here. You can look up the dosing if necessary and relative cost. Next, please. And uh, again, the, the study with the tricyclics, early intervention. Start within 48 hours of the outbreak. That was a study. Amitriptyline, 25 milligrams at night for three months, reduction of postherpetic neuralgia by 50%. Next, please. 